Admitting to decades of abuse tonight, weeks after the Pope condemned sexual abuse in the church during a historic summit at the Vatican, the Diocese of Columbus has released a bombshell report. Good evening, everyone. I'm Colleen Marshall. I'm Mark Taylor. Dozens of names of local clergy ha from Central Ohio have now been made public, years after the church refused to even address those allegations. And tonight, we have team coverage. Our Ted Hart spoke to victims and has what they have to say about this new revelation. But we're going to begin with Sean Lanier, who is learning more about the men who appear on that list. And he's joining us now live outside the Diocese of Columbus. And that's right. I spoke with a few uh, Catholics who were going into mass earlier today, and they say off camera that they are happy that this list was released, but right now they're going to pray for the victims and also the church. I share with the faithful of our diocese sorrow, sadness, and anger over such behavior. I apologize to all victims for the abuse suffered and hope that these disclosures will help bring healing to all victims and their families. Columbus Bishop Frederick Campbell released that statement about the 34 clergy members who served in the Diocese of Columbus and have been accused of sexual abuse of minors. The church says these allegations are credible and are based on the review of facts and circumstances. They add the most recent credible allegation of sexual abuse of a minor happened in 1992. A statement from SNAP, an organization that provides support to victims of sexual abuse, reads in part, We're glad that Bishop Frederick Campbell and Columbus Church officials have taken the first step towards transparency. The releasing of the names is an important step for the protection of children, prevention of future cases of abuse, and the healing of survivors. Today, still, it's only the first step. The diocese say they are committed to the safety of children and youth in hopes the release of this information helps restore the trust with the church. And I recently got an email from the Diocese of Columbus, and they told me that they do not intend to give out any more information about the victims or the allegations. They did tell me that they are fully cooperating with law enforcement officials if they are to look into any of these allegations. Right now, according to the Franklin County Prosecutor Ron O'Brien, all of the cases where the priests are still living, the statute of limitation has passed. Looking for you downtown, Sean Lanier, NBC4. All right, Sean, thank you. Close to 100 Catholic dioceses across the country have now released lists of alleged abusers. It's seen as some as long overdue, but for victims of priest abuse, it can trigger a full range of emotions. NBC4's Ted Hart talked with someone who works with victims of priest abuse. He joins us now with more on that, Ted. Yeah, confronting the reality of what happened can be difficult and painful for all victims of sexual abuse at the hands of a priest. And the public release of names of priests can also be painful. Father Thomas McLaughlin is on the list. NBC4 talked to McLaughlin in the mid-90s after he had served a prison term for molesting a 12-year-old boy. I've suffered too. I've gone to prison. I, I, I've lost my job. I, I, I'm trying to build a new life. But for victims of McLaughlin and other priests, the release of a list can bring on different emotions and reopen old wounds. They're upset, they're probably getting angry, they're probably getting sad. Carol Zamonski works with victims of priest abuse and says for those whose abuser had not previously been named publicly, this was a good day. That would make someone feel really good and it also ups the possibility that someone else might report a crime done by the same perpetrator. McLaughlin, or Father Mac as he was better known, returned to society from prison to operate a bed and breakfast and to work in his garden. I'm miserably sorry. Uh, I, I would do anything I could to, to repair the, any damage. But the, um... McLaughlin died in 2013. Carol Zamonski says releasing the names is an important step toward transparency, but from a victim's standpoint, it's somewhat incomplete. But there's a column missing. And the missing column is where are they now if they're still alive? And do their local area authorities know that they're sexual abusers, noted sexual abusers? Um, that really needs, that column is missing. And Zamonski says that she and others will now work to find where those priests who are still alive are currently living and then notify local authorities of their past history. Local for you, Ted Hart, NBC4. All right, Ted, thank you.